Ho, ho, ho. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There are only three scriptures in the Old Testament that use the word ho, and each one makes a direct reference to the escape of the bride. The first scripture is in Ruth 4.1, which talks about Boaz going up to the gate. So, ho, up to the gate. The gate that is upward is New Jerusalem in heaven, mentioned in Revelation 21, and verse 12 explains that it has 12 gates. Next, Isaiah 55, 1, Ho, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. So, Ho, everyone that thirsts, come to the waters. This is also referenced in Revelation 21 and 22, in direct association with New Jerusalem in heaven, where the throne is. 22 verse 1 says the water of life will proceed out of the throne. So, those who go to the waters are those who go to the throne in heaven. And finally, Zechariah 2 6, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven. And if we look closely at verses 2 through 6, we can see it's talking about measuring Jerusalem, which will be inhabited by the multitude. And they will flee as the four winds of heaven. This is directly referenced in Revelation 7, 9 through 17, the multitude taken out of the tribulation and stand before the throne in heaven. Revelation 11, 1 and 2, which talk about measuring the temple in heaven, but leaving out the court, which will be given to the multitude. And Matthew 24, 31, the elect who are gathered together by the four winds in heaven. In other words, the Old Testament is saying, Ho, 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 up to the gate, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters of life, and flee with the four winds, and be gathered together to stand before the throne in heaven as New Jerusalem. And there is one more scripture in Psalm 104, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. And notice which words are actually words in the ancient text here, and which words are just filler words. The actual words from the Hebrew text says, enter gates, thanksgiving. That's interesting, but there's more. Although there are only three scriptures in the Old Testament using the word ho, the actual word translated as ho also means woe. And it's translated as woe far more often. Woe unto them that join house to house. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity. Woe unto them that call evil good. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that write grievousness which they have prescribed. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, etc. So, you'll notice that the word is translated as woe when it relates to something negative, and it's translated as ho when it relates to something positive. And Jesus reiterates this in the New Testament, woe to the scribes and Pharisees, etc. The woes are always given as a warning, but there's something in the New Testament that tells us exactly when the woes occur. Specifically, there are three woes that correspond to the last three trumpets. In Revelation 8:13, it says, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Then it goes on in chapter 9, verse 12, One woe is past. Then in chapter 11, verse 14, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe comes quickly. So you'll notice that these three woes occur during the final three trumpets. The first woe is the fifth trumpet in Revelation 9, 1 and 2. A star falls from heaven and darkens the sun and the air. The second woe is the sixth trumpet in Revelation 9, 14 through 18. 
the people die by fire, smoke, brimstone, and an army that comes out of Iraq. And the third woe is the seventh trumpet in Revelation 11, 15 through 19, lightning, voices, thunder, and hail. The prophecy tells us the seven trumpets, along with the seven plagues, occur in one hour. They're an asteroid impact. And this event, the falling of the star and the darkening of the sky, it says, will occur at the end of the tribulation of 1260 years, starting a final time of trouble and darkness that lasts three and a half years. And the escape, we're told, occurs when the asteroid hits. So there are three hoes in the Old Testament referencing those who escape and three woes in the New Testament referencing those who do not escape. Ho, ho, ho to one group and woe, woe, woe to the other group. But there's more. In Jeremiah 30, 18 through 24, it talks about the fierce anger of the Lord upon the wicked in the latter days. But it says in verse 19 that Jacob, Homo sapiens, will be multiplied and glorified, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. So there's another reference to thanksgiving and making merry at the time of the fierce anger of the Lord in the latter days. The fierce anger of the Lord is a reference to the day of the Lord when the whole earth will burn, and that's the asteroid impact, which is when the rapture or escape will occur. Then another reference to this during the holiday season is found in Ezekiel 6, 11 through 14. It talks about how they'll fall by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence when the fury is upon them and the land is made desolate. And listen to this, their slain men will be among their idols when this happens and their idols it says are under every green tree in other words at the fury the slain will lie among their idols which are under green trees is this a reference to christmas we don't seek the day of the lord but we do hope for the escape and the escape happens at the day of the Lord. And this next one, I think, is the one that really confirms all of this. It's found in Revelation 11, verse 10. It says, the people of earth will be making merry and sending gifts to one another at the end of the 1260 year tribulation. And this phrase, rejoice over them, can also be translated thrive before. So this implies that at the end of the 1260 years, the people on the earth will be observing the holiday season before the rapture occurs. For more information on more scriptures that confirm this, see the videos and playlists linked here. Thank you so much to those who make this work possible. If you like this video, please consider providing support using the link below or at indigoflower.net. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.